Hello, my name is Tom, and I produce music like the song you're hearing now. In this episode of Understanding Synthesizers, I'm going to talk about what I think is the most crucial part of building sounds, waveforms. These videos are written to be viewed in order, so please watch the first two episodes if you haven't done so. In particular, the oscillators episode builds into this really nicely. Whenever I go to create a sound, one of the first thoughts I have is, what waveform am I going to use for this sound? And understanding them allows you to arrive at your desired sound much faster, and it also allows you to deconstruct some of your favourite sounds and categorise them much easier. A waveform is created by an oscillator. In this diagram we can see a sine wave. The vertical axis represents the sound pressure, and the horizontal axis represents time. The physics behind this is quite complicated, and if you want to read more and go in depth, you can find a link in the description with more information. I'm going to purely focus on how this sounds and what these waveforms mean for our sound. I'm also going to focus on the most popular waveforms. You can actually have a waveform of literally any shape, but there are a few you're going to be using very often. The way to categorise these waveforms into sound is to look at the harmonics they create. To do this, I'm going to have to talk about some technical theory. If you play a C3 note on your keyboard, your fundamental frequency is 130Hz. This is one of those things you just have to accept as a hard fact, and you can find a table online with all the keyboard notes in relation to frequencies. If you double the 130Hz, we find our first harmonic of 260Hz. And already this might start to sound quite confusing, so let me play you an example where I slowly add some harmonics to a sound. What you really need to understand here is the relationship between these sounds as they change. So let's talk about the specific waveforms and what their harmonics are. Firstly, we have the sine wave. Interestingly, it's physically impossible to create a sine wave in the real world, so anytime you hear a sine wave, it's not a sine wave. Yeah, this stuff is confusing. It emits a single tone, sort of like a tuning fork. In dance music, sine waves are often used for sub basses, so that we have a clean, pure tone that's punching in club speakers really hard, and it's not interfering with other sounds. And really, it can be used in any sound, given that it's just a tone, which makes it a nice addition when sounds need something a little bit extra, or a nice start for sounds that aren't going to be too complicated. Next up, we have a triangle wave, which has a few more harmonics than the sine wave, but still a small amount. Again, this is typically used as part of sounds for simple tones. It's the halfway point between the sine wave and our next waveform, which is the saw wave. The saw wave might well be the most used of these waveforms. It contains many harmonics that make it great for creating many different types of sounds, including, but not limited to, rich pad sounds and lead sounds. Lastly, we have a personal favourite, the square wave. It offers a rich amount of content and varying degrees of options. You'll notice this waveform is either at the minus one position or the one position and never in between. And this is where it gets its other name, pulse wave. It's a unique waveform as we can control the pulse width. This is often done through what we commonly call pulse width modulation, or PWM, to create changing sounds. Take a listen to this example. You don't have to memorize the harmonics of these waveforms, but it's important to understand the content that each one offers. Whenever building a sound, I like to use a spectrum analyzer, which shows all the frequencies, so that I can see the harmonics I'm adding as I go along. Waveform controls are the same as oscillators, for obvious reasons, but sometimes you may be able to control the phase, which determines where in the waveform it begins playing. If you have two oscillators, with waveforms playing at slightly different tunings, you'll create the detune effect a massively popular practice that thickens sounds by having two waveforms that are slightly different in phase. There's all sorts of extra changes you can make to the waveforms in oscillators, but we're trying to keep things simple for this series, so I think we'll cover this in another video. If ever you run into a wall when creating a sound and can't quite seem to get it right, changing the waveforms can be a really good way to bring something new to the table. Understanding them is definitely one of the fundamentals in creating your own sounds. I think that's it for this video. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.